A few people have been asking um, quite regularly about the main box that I have behind me and specifically the triple screen setup with the uh, the marquee and of course the uh, the flyers at the back. The point out here is the hardware setup here. So you can see I've just got a, a normal uh, main screen here which most main people would be running. I've got a secondary screen here which is this sort of bar uh, screen which is typically used in um, you know sort of advertising display type use cases certainly not usually used for a marquee now it is actually slightly slimmer than what a normal marquee would be anyway that's uh, that's the second screen and then at the back here we've got effectively a, a Samsung TV put on its side um, quite a nice picture this actually it's quite quite old now and um, it's, this is actually running several instances of Hypermarquee. And you can see down on the bottom here, we've even got showing the cabinet and the uh, control panel. And that's just in front of a little main graphic. So where the artwork is available, it will actually show those. And you'll find out soon, as I show you how this works, that each one of these is a separate Hypermarquee instance. So it's like a little window in its, in its uh, own right. And if there isn't any uh, arcade machine or joystick, which we'll probably see in a minute because it's going to jump to another game right now. Here it goes. Oh, well, this one has, <laughs> has the artwork there as well. But if it doesn't, you'll just see the background imagery. And I quite like that, guys. You know, I like to see what the control panels originally looked like um, and definitely what the machine looked like. Good old gauntlet here. So yeah, so there's effectively three hypermarquee panels running on top of each other here. And then we go to the flyer. So there's typical flyer artwork that you get from uh, those main packs. And uh, it's just about to change as we're going on the rotation. And you would have seen just in the flash in between there the Spaces Arcade logo. And that's because if there wasn't actually any artwork, then it will show a default, well that's how I've got it set up, it would show a default picture and I've got the Spaces Arcade picture in there now. And so we're uh, seeing Pengo here and we can see the marquees changed along with it. And right up the very top above that we've also got additional information about the manufacturer and the ROM that's being run which is really quite useful when you're trapping through things in MAME. And right at the very top, which is missing on this particular game, is the main title. Now it depends on the particular ROM when this title comes up. And I can't remember now if that was because if it was a bootleg or not. I've just switched games. You can see now I've got Super Pac-Man up there in the red. So that's another Hyper Marquee instance. So guys, that's sort of how it works. It's basically a number of Hyper marquee instances that run to show the different parts that you want to see and then you can position those anywhere you like on the screen and of course the marquee is just another one that I've just positioned by dragging it over onto that third monitor and once you go into a game so if we go into maybe even Asteroids Deluxe we can see here there we go. It's so nice guys seeing all this artwork. It really, really does make a difference. And the other thing you'll see here is, look at this guys. It's a little high score table. <laughs> and I could probably do this a little bit better and actually have sort of a, like a black background to that to make it a little bit clearer. Or even just a nice scoreboard graphic would be really cool. How about like a uh, Spacey's Arcade specific uh, themed scoreboard graphic. And basically, yeah, Hyper Marquee is loading that as another instance for games that support it. And it will trap the high scores. And of course, you know, for Asteroids Deluxe, that's not something that you would see. You see at the top here, we've actually got the, there we go, there's the high scores there. And you can see they are the high scores there. <laughs> let's, uh, let's hop out of, hop out of Asteroids. The first thing I want to show is that Hyper Marquee um, has effectively two key key programs. So there's Hyper Marquee itself, 
and there's what's called the EDS or the event dispatch system. So I'm just going to open up Hypermarquee. It comes up with this uh, little interface here. Now we're not going to, you would normally do a new marquee and go through that process guys. What I'm going to do is just go into an existing marquee and show you that. So in here we've got a configuration file for each of those individual sections that I was showing before. And so if we find the top one here that says flyer artwork and we open that up, this now is going to open up the flyer. So we'll see up the top here, here we go. We've got the, uh, the flyer open and of course because it's just running on its own it's opening up the default graphic and that is the space is arcade so if I get the mouse now in fact what I might do guys I'm going to put this on the tripod just get a steadier picture okay so now if we go up with the, uh, the mouse here and if I just click up the top you can see it now opens up a menu on here we could actually click to move the, the, men, the screen around so this is where you would actually pick it up and potentially move the position of the window for where you want it and then once you put it to where you want it you just close out of here and it will save that position and what I'm going to show you is just going into the edit mode into application preferences and settings and this now will give us all the settings now the settings are going to come up on the other screen so let's flick down to that Okay, and this is the main screen. It's now showing effectively the configuration for that flyer. Now, this is a little bit of the confusing thing, guys, when you first use Hypermarquee and you set it up, because you look at here and you go, well, there's nothing set up here under global settings. <laughs> uh, and it does take a little bit of playing around. And again, I'm not gonna go into the details of everything in here, guys, because that just turns into a massive tutorial that's gonna take hours. Uh, Having said that, there is like there is a help file that comes with it, and um, you just persevere with it because it just just takes a little bit of knack to get around. And I haven't been in here for a long time actually, um, and so even for myself doing changes in configuration, I'd probably have to relook stuff up as I go. But the bottom line is is that there's different types of marquee. So the marquee that we're using for the flyer is a graphical marquee. Uh, it's not a text-based one, and so therefore. Um, it's going to use, and it's not a high score, see there's that high score one here that actually shows the high score, so it has a special tab on its, on its own. So what we want to look at is the one that says artwork. Now if we go to artwork, now we've got some information in here. So really this is all I needed to, to set up to get that uh, background flyer to show. So let me take the, the camera off the tripod so we can have a closer look here. Okay, so you can see here I've got the main artwork file it's looking for under main images artwork and that's where it's uh, that's where I've got all my flyers and you can see it's got in brackets file name and that's because that's effectively a, like a wildcard so depending on what game is currently running um, the hyper marquee is going to detect that and I'll show you how that happens in a minute and when it detects it it will um, it will replace obviously the file name of the main ROM in here and then load up the flyer of the same name. Now if there's not, it's actually got here, see it's got the first alternate artwork and it's got a number of other alternate artwork you put in here as well. So this is my default flyer which shows the Spaces Arcade. So it's as easy as that to set this up just to show that flyer and down the bottom here it's got some other options. There's things like cycling artwork, you can have it cycle through, so you might even have a window just sitting to the side guys cycling through all your flyers you know just separate to the side of your arcade it's a whole range of ways you could use this it's actually a very very powerful system again it's just a little bit tricky to get your head around when you first use this um, this interface it has shaders as well where you can do um, things like fade effects and transparencies and stuff like that and again I'm not going to go into all of that because that again would be a, a tutorial that I really don't want to get into right now. But at the basic level, you can see how we've just loaded up the, um, uh, the flyer marquee. And at the moment, only one hyper marquee instance is running. So if we go down to the bottom of the screen here, when we have a look at what is running, if I highlight there, we can see we've got the actual spaces 
arcade screen and we've got the configuration. So what we'd expect to see here guys when we have a lot more of the screens running is all of them, all every, you know, an instance for every single component that I've got set up here. So guys I hope, I hope this is making sense. So now if I close this, um, it's not going to change obviously because we're not running MAME. So how does it know what to change? How does it actually hook in to uh, hyperspin? Because it's really coming off the back of, of, of hyperspin. Um, and I'll show you that now. So what we're going to do is we're going to first of all close out of here. And the next piece of trickery <laughs> to this program is the uh, program called the Event Dispatch System. Now on the on the Hyper uh, Marquee information site, which is by the way on the Hyperspin site guys, I'll put a link down below for the for Hyper Marquee of course, um, you need to get a separate program called the Event um, Dispatch System which works alongside this particular program. And again, when you first sort of come across this stuff, guys, you sort of think, what the hell is going on here? But it all makes sense <laughs> once you've used it for a bit. And basically what this program does, this, this actually runs silently. And it's effectively a program that's going to fire off the expected or the configured hypermarquee windows that you've configured up when certain events happen so for example when you're in hyperspin and you're selecting a game as soon as you click on that particular game the event dispatch system is then going to go oh okay you've done a certain action i'm going to start up one of these or one or more of these hypermarquees that you've configured and that's basically what is going on in this particular program is you're setting up and saying which ones of your um, configuration files you can see at the top here we've got main marquee artwork so that's the main mark marquee artwork file that we had before and this is going to trigger based on these event filters and it's got some numbers here. Now you'll need to look up in the manual for hypermarquee and we'll actually explain what those numbers are, but each of those will pertain to a certain type of action. So it'll either be a start the game or exit the game or exit the uh, hyper, uh, hyper Olympic, <laughs> um, hyperspin itself. Or whatever the action is, um, you can it, this program's gonna capture it for the ones that it supports and then it will run this hyper marquee instance <laughs> see what I mean guys it gets a little bit confusing now you'll see on the left hand side I'll just point this out so that when you go through configuring things um, you can sort of set it up even just like I've got here guys and you're going to get a good start so if you go through into hyper marquee set up your individual ones first like I've got them and then set it up with this configuration then um, that will definitely get you started. And one thing you do have to look out for is this method of firing up the, uh, the instance is all of them will be pipe. It's just the way that it fires up. I can't remember the technicalities of it as opposed to CLI, which I think is the command line interface. And you'll see that CLI for the command line interface is set with LED blinky. Now, why is that? Well, that's because they did a few smart things. They basically have got it set up so that when you can, when you install this, guys, the event dispatch system, you actually rename to be LED Blinky, which means that whenever you're setting up MAME, for those guys that have set up MAME and have used LED Blinky to, you know, change the colors of your lights, um, MAME will go off and, if, you know, if you've configured it through Rocket Launcher or some other configuration to, to start LED Blinky, you point it to the EDS dispatch system um, of the same name. So you've, you, as I said, you've renamed this to LED Blinky. MAME or Rocket Launcher fires off LED Blinky and it opens this instead. And when it opens this, this actually then opens the real LED Blinky. <laughs> okay, if that makes sense. And again, guys, I do, I do apologize that this isn't like a really full in-depth tutorial because as you, as you can see, it sort of really does need a proper tutorial all the way through, but that really will take a lot of work to do because of the complexity. I just hope this is enough to get you started and get you to understand how it works. 
So the cool thing is that w to test your setup, you can do it within the event dispatch system and fire it up manually just like I have done now. So for example, you can see up the top here, it's actually got a game name, Juno First. And this is running it from what system? Arcade Classics, which is the hyperspin wheel that I've got set up um, for certain main games that are classics. And it's got triggered here an event of three. So if I actually test this with the event of three, now three, if I remember, because I'm looking at the events here, I can see three is pretty much on all of them. So that I, must be three must be like the initial start, I think start game um, again you'll find this out guys in the manual if that's correct or not but uh, this is a nice way to test it so you can say well I want to test that particular event um, so you could test any of the other events as well of course and then I want to actually go launch all now I could actually do this individually so you can see these got try 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 and the next to close them down so for example that um, marquee artwork one we just do that one first, just on by itself. Try. It's now going to do the Juno first event number three, and we should. Oh, here we go. And there's the marquee. Okay, that's not the flyer, of course. That's the marquee. And there we can go. We can see that that is working. So it's a really nice way to test it. If I go X, close that down, and we can see that it's shut down the marquee. So now guys, if I go to launch all, it's going to launch all of these based on event number three for Juno First ROM. So everything now should come up that I've got configured in each one of those windows. You see LED blinky started, it just flashed. And you do have to wait a little bit guys as it does its thing. Here we go, and then bang, 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 that's come up, these have come up right up the top there we go and we just sort of flick over there to the high score table um, which has come up as well and that's it that's uh, that's the basis of it now I could take you know my mouse and go up to any one of those windows and configure them and configure them further um, and as I said before like down the bottom here if we now look at what's running a look at the hyper marquee windows you can see now see there's an instance for every single one there so I could close those manually okay guys so clearly there is you know there's a lot more to learn about hyper marquee with the event dispatch system but I'm just again I'm, I'm hoping that this is just enough to sort of give you an idea how it works get you started so that once you go through the forum and the instructions you'll sort of know what to do without getting too confused so there you go guys there's a bit of an insight into how it works and uh, what a cool piece of program and, and look I haven't got the latest version either um, I think there's been a few versions released since I last looked at it so it could have changed slightly since uh, since my configuration so things might be a slightly a little bit different I know I have one small problem with mine that occasionally for whatever reason, I don't know if it's a Windows problem or a problem with the program itself, but it will actually corrupt the settings for each of the, um, the settings files to you know, represent each of the individual marquee files. So what I've done is I've got a, a setup to uh, basically copy those out and every time the machine boots it actually copies from the backup um, over the top of the other one so again I don't know if that's a problem with my system or not but look out for that if you get some strange things happen where you've set up a marquee and then suddenly it stops working you're not sure why all right guys um, the other thing is is that if you sort of think outside the box a little bit you know especially when you get into the configuration items as I said it's not not easy to get in the into the actual hyper marquee configuration areas and work out how each one works it takes a bit of time but even with that little setting about having the randomization of of the graphics that you're showing for that whatever that particular um, uh, graphic marquee you want to show I mean you could show anything it doesn't have to be flyers you know it could be something else or you could have movie posters for example so you could have your main machine playing your main games and then having a you know a monitor behind cycling through 
movie posters. So there's all those sorts of things you can think about. Think about, you have to think outside the square a little bit. I did actually do some testing um, a while ago, probably a couple of years ago now, and what I got was uh, the ultra-wide monitor that's actually now in the Grand Champion cockpit. I got that and actually, because it's you know super, super long, but quite thin um, in terms of its height, I got one of those and I fit it temporarily to see how it would work. I fit it in a cocktail machine, guys. And the intent was is that I would play MAME with a vertical orientation on the on the ultra wide and with the screen being so wide it would allow me to put the um, instructions for the cocktail machine um, you know one one way up and one the other way up uh, underneath there and then the glass would go on top the black paint would go around it underneath the glass and it would look like it was sort of like the original um, instruction set just sticking into the you know in the window on, on the top of the cocktail machine and um, and of course as you dynamically change through games it would change those instructions <laughs> on there so I had that <coughs> all planned ready to build and uh, and then I got caught up actually in buying real arcade machines and since then I've got the bug for real arcade machines and using CRT monitors, except for this one, of course, which is still using LCD. So I didn't want to introduce another main box with, L with an LCD screen, but just have a think about that, guys. Lots of different ways you can use that. Again, thanks for watching and look after yourself and play all your games and uh, all that good stuff. And of course, we have to finish off with, have you got a 20? <laughs>